don't forget that Thursday, June 6th is coming right up. If you are near or want to come to Portland, Maine, you can catch the premiere of Relationship Alive live. I'm featuring Terry Reel, the author of The New Rules of Marriage and creator of Relational Life Therapy. He has influenced thousands of couples therapists worldwide, and you'll be able to experience him in an intimate theater with a chance to ask your most pressing relationship questions. We're also featuring musical guest Katie Matzel, a local favorite here in Portland who has played to sold out houses across New England. To buy tickets or for more information, visit neilsatin.com slash tickets. And I hope to see you there. What do you do when you like to talk about emotions and the juicy stuff and your partner doesn't? Or what if it's reversed? What if you're tired of your partner always talking about emotions and getting emotional and you just need a little space? How do you turn that dynamic into something positive for your relationship? That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. But first, I just want to remind you that Relationship Alive is my offering for you so that you can have the most successful, thriving relationship possible. If you are finding the show to be helpful for you, please consider a donation to help support us and ensure that we can continue. To choose something that feels right for you, just visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. If you're looking for a safe space to talk about relationship stuff, you can come join the Relationship Alive community on Facebook. Just find us, click join, and we'll let you in so that you can be a part of the amazing conversations that are happening there with nearly 3,000 people. Also, if you are looking for help in improving your communication and the communication that happens in your relationship, check out my free guide to my top three relationship communication secrets. These are the kinds of things that will help you stay connected no matter how challenging the topic that you're talking about. To download my free guide, just visit neilsatin.com slash relate, or you can text the word relate to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And I'm about to come out with a new course about relationship communication that's going to be a really deep dive into how to improve the communication in your relationship. And it's designed for just one person to take. So if you take it, you'll be golden. If you and your partner take it, you'll be like super golden or I don't know, platinum or something like that. But It's designed specifically for one person to take it and to be able to transform the communication dynamic of their entire relationship. So keep an eye out for that. And if you get the communication guide that I mentioned earlier, then I will let you know when the course is ready. All right. I think that is it. Let us get on with the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to dive in quickly with one of the world's experts on relationships to get answers to some of your questions. I dropped into the Relationship Alive community on Facebook and said, hey, if you had 10 minutes to talk with Sue Johnson, today's guest, what would you ask her? And, and then I was like, asking for a friend. Okay, I'm asking for myself. And, uh, and so we got some great questions from people. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to ask them and to share just a few moments with our, our guest. As I mentioned, her name is Sue Johnson. She is one of the world's experts on relationship and uh, specifically on how we use attachment theory and attachment science to build stronger bonds with our partner and to thrive in connection. It's also a great way to understand when things are going south, why they're going south, and how to rebuild your relationship. Uh, Sue Johnson is also the creator of Emotionally Focused Couples Therapy, also known as EFT, and has trained thousands of therapists around the world in using EFT to help couples. And it is one of the methods that has been empirically shown through research to be effective at helping couples build stronger relationships. Sue has been on the show before. If you've been a longtime listener, you know that. 
To listen to any of her other episodes, you can visit neilsatin.com slash sue, S-U-E, and then a number. And so there's just Sue, or there's Sue 2, and Sue 3. She's been on all of those times. So this will be Sue 4, and we will have a detailed transcript, as always, that you can get by visiting that URL, uh, or by texting the word PASSION to the number 33444 and following the instructions. Sue Johnson, so great to be here with you again on Relationship hey, Alive. it's always fun. Nice to be here. Great. Great. So um, thank you for being willing to just kind of jump in and go with a few, a few quick questions as opposed to our long conversations that we often have. It's so easy to talk to you for a long time because there's so much to say about this topic. Let's start with, I thought this was a great question, and this comes up all the time. What can you do if you're in a relationship where one person loves to talk about emotions and feelings and have those conversations and the other push person would rather talk about things and events and and when you start having an emotional conversation with that person they start to shut down and that often creates this dynamic right where they're each kind of wanting more of the other or in some cases less of the other what advice would you give a couple in that situation? And maybe you could speak to kind of both members of the couple and how they might come to a better place. Well, if we saw a couple like that in EFT, in therapy, or if we saw a couple like that in one of our educational groups, our hold me tight groups, um, we would get them to talk about just what you said, to talk about the process. You know, everybody stays with the content and with their own kind of dilemmas and their own kind of issues. And from that point of view, all you're left with is that these two people are different. Yep, people are different. Everybody's basically incompatible on some level, but they're not because you can talk about the process. So if I was sitting down with that couple, I would ask the person who wanted to talk about emotion, could you share with your partner what's happening for you and what it's like for you um, when you're, what is so important for you about wanting to share your heart? And, and you make it simple, right? That's the other thing. What is so important for you about wanting to share your heart and about wanting to understand something about your partner's emotions? Can you help him understand that? And the person might say, well, yeah, you know, there's times in the relationship where I kind of feel lonely. You know, it's like I'm in a relationship, but I can't quite put my hand on you, Tom. I can't quite, I don't quite know where you are. I don't quite know how you're feeling about me. And I kind of feel lonely. And it, when people talk on this process level, it's usually news to the other person. The other person says, uh, I didn't know that you felt lonely. I felt like you were just fed up with me and that I wasn't emotional enough for you. So, you know, this is how it kind of goes. Usually the person who's looking for this emotional connection is saying, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Can you connect with me? I need this emotional connection. And we know how important that is to people. Psychology pathologized that for a long time, saying, oh, no, you shouldn't need that. It's somehow immature. And now what we're understanding is, no, 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 it's just who we are. It's how your brain is structured. Um, You're a bonding mammal and you need this sense of connection. So, you know, that person would say, I don't need to talk about my emotions forever. That's the other thing. (laughs) People have fears. The other person who's more withdrawn or more introverted would say, well, like if we start talking about emotions, are we going to have to talk about it like for a week (laughs) I'm going to, usually the fear there is I'm going to get overwhelmed. Right. right. I'm not going to know how to do it right. Right. So it's important for the person to say, no, I don't need to talk about emotions for a week. I just need to be able to check in with you and connect. And the other person says, oh, well, you know, that's really not so hard. And then the other person needs to be able to say, you know, um, I'm slower than you. I'm, I'm more externally focused than you i'm i'm not as embedded as you in my emotions i need to um think about it a bit and i'm not always sure how i feel and um you know if i'm going to share with you with my emotions then you've got to like understand that 
And, and I also want to connect about other things. You know, I want to talk about <laughs> the joke with me and my husband is that his favorite place to go is a hardware store. <laughs> right? So, so uh, I can't remember where we were. We were somewhere exotic. Oh, we were on this beautiful little island a couple of days ago. And we're wandering around after coffee. And my husband's looking across the street. And he's looking at the hardware store. Right? And I said, no. Like, no, no. We're not, we, we haven't come to, you don't want to go in the He said, I just want to go in and find. I said, right. So, you know, I want to go look in the art galleries. He wants to go to the hardware store. The point is, if you can talk about them and talk about your needs and your softer feelings and you can be responsive to your partner, you can deal with all kinds of differences. Tricky part is that so many of us, that's not what happens. What happens is we get stuck. We get stuck. Um, the person who's wanting connection gets upset and angry and says, you never talk to me. Right? And that's kind of a, a challenge and it's um, uh, an accusation, really. And then the other person feels, oh, like they're failing. They can't do what their partner wants. And they say, well, I don't want to talk right now. I don't, I, I'm busy right now. I, so they shut down more. The more they shut down, the more the other person gets upset. And that is what brings so many people in to see someone like me. Um, and that's what I tried to lay out for people in my book for the public, Hold Me Tight, because um, so many people don't understand that we all we get we can get trapped there. And then the dance takes us over. And before you know where you are, um, the other person looks like the enemy and looks like somebody who's so different than you that it you can't even, you know, you don't even know what to do with it. So, so it's a good question. And it, we think it's always about gender, but it's not always. You know, I've worked with folks, I've worked with folks where it's the man saying, you know, I want to, I want to talk to you or I want to get close, <laughs> you know, and it's the woman saying, what are you talking about? You know, I've, I come home from my law practice, I'm exhausted, you know, and so it's like people have to be able to be emotionally accessible and open and responsive to each other. It's not about making cognitive deals. Cognitive deals, they don't kind of go to the right level. It's about um, being able to share what's going on with you. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if I've answered your question. Have I answered your I think you I have. have. Yeah, yeah in, in detail. And um, one little point about that that I'm curious about, because I was, I was thinking about the question and thinking, okay, like, so we reached this point, as you said, it used to be pathologized when someone yes. was emotional in a relationship. How do we avoid pathologizing the other partner who is less emotionally oriented? I think what we've learned over the years in, in emotionally focused therapy is that people, we think of emotions and how we deal with emotions as somehow random or irrational. And what we've learned over the years is emotions aren't irrational for a start. There's always a good reason for why you feel the way you feel. Mm -hmm. um, emotions are all about telling you what matters in the world and what, what is important for your survival. And people have very good reasons. They have learned to focus on certain things and to deal with their emotions in a certain way to survive. And they're standing in front of you. So it's worked. It's worked on some level. Right. And now they, that's what they know how to do. So, you know, I remember working with a man who could hardly, I mean, he could not look into his wife's face for sure and talk about his inner world. If he was going to do it, he had to go very slowly and stare at the rug, stare at the carpet, right? And But what he told me was he grew up in a very violent family where there was the music to their dance was all kind of hostility and rage and violence all the time. So anytime he heard that music, his brain would go into alarm mm -hmm. and his brain would start looking for ways out. Right. And he needed to be able to tell his partner that, but, but there were very good reasons why when she would up the emotional music, he would start to freeze and go still. Right. And, there's no point in telling him that's bad or, 
you mustn't do that, that doesn't help at all. The most useful thing is to say, well, that you must have a very good reason for that. Um, you know, obviously that was important for you to be able to do that right now. Um, and can you tell your wife, you know, how can she help you? How can she help you not move immediately into that shutdown? Yeah. He said, oh, she can talk slowly. And his wife roared with laughter because, of course, she spoke very fast. <laughs> <laughs> totally. He said she can speak slowly because everyone in my family spoke very fast. And, you know, all this fast emotional stuff coming at me, I just feel like I'm in a hail of bullets. Listen to his image. I'm in a hail of bullets. I'm going to get hurt. Right. So, you know, um, no, we must not pathologize. People have certain ways of regulating their emotions. And the thing about that is if we accept them and we understand them, um, people can then add to them. You know, relatively withdrawn folks can learn to come out and talk about their what's happening inside and know that it works and that the other person listens and actually it creates connection. And people who are really hungry for emotional connection for all kinds of good reasons can also learn to trust another person and to not have everything so urgent all the time. You mm -hmm. know, like, you've got to speak to me now. Right. Can translate into, you know, um, basically, I know you care for me and I'm going to take a deep breath here and I'm going to give you some space after you come home from work and I'm going to trust that then if I come and talk to you, you'll be willing to talk to me. Yeah. So it's a lot of distress in relationships comes from partners triggering each other and ending up feeling disconnected and insecure, rejected or abandoned. And as human beings, what people don't get is that feeling rejected and abandoned by someone you count on, your brain, your brain translates that into danger, straight danger, just like walking up on a freeway you know, a crossing a freeway is danger. Your brain says, uh-oh, emotional isolation. If you call, no one will come, danger, right? right? And, right. and people don't understand how they trigger each other. Yeah, and so the words that come up to mind for me is, one, I'm hearing that there's this sense of moderation, like the emotional person, I'm putting that in quotes, like learning how to be emotional without overwhelming another person and the less emotional person learning, like, I don't think anyone is devoid of emotions, but, but learning like, oh, there's actually something happening here and it could be useful. It doesn't have to overwhelm the system, but it's not like you're going to turn an emotional, a non-emotional person into emotional person unless they discover some joy in that. I'm reminded of a of a conversation I think that's with, a good um, point. yeah, yes. I'm, I'm reminded of a conversation with Dan Siegel where he talks about um, he was doing mindfulness work with someone who was in their 80s or 90s and woke that person up to their physical sensation and their emotional experience, and suddenly the world was a rich place where they really wanted to be and and were enjoying it more. It's not to say that yes. that's required, but that I think that's available for people if they're willing to dip their toe into that water. Yes. And also in relationships, the bottom line is relationships are all about emotion. Relationships are a dance and the, the emotion is the music and relationships are all about emotion. So when I'm working with a couple and a one partner says something pretty loaded, you know, like, well, sometimes I think about leaving. I get so desperate. I think about leaving. And I say to the other person who might be the rather shut down person, what's happening for you? And they say nothing. <laughs> I mean, I deal with it respectfully, but the bottom line is in my head, I say, uh, no, that's impossible. Unless, if you care about this person and you're not dead and you're not a lizard, you are feeling because she just sparked um, alarm in your mammalian brain, in your mammalian brain that knows that emotional isolation and losing someone who's a huge resource for you and who you depend on is is a safety cue. Your mammalian brain knows that. Your whole nervous system sings that song. So to, when people say, no, I feel nothing, I just go, aha. <laughs> right, and, and I think with and what we'll, you're, go ahead. Then I say, let's try that again. You know, she turned to you and she 
dead. You know, and so I sort of run it past his amygdala again. And he finally he says, well, 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 I don't know. Um, I just want to get out of here. So then he starts to tell me the emo he starts to tell me my body tells me this, get out of here. So yeah. then we go with that. And the whole thing opens up. You know, people, we haven't taught people to trust their emotions and listen to them and make them their friend. We haven't taught therapists that. We've taught people that emotions are sort of, you know, dangerous stuff. They get out of control. Um, they're associated with women. <laughs> you know, women kind of going What's hysterical. Wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a bad idea. So, you know, it's... Um, there's a lot of, of interesting stuff in our society about uh, putting rationality on a pedestal and um, dishing our emotional realities, actually, when the bottom line is it's our emotions that organize our inner world and it's our emotions that organize the signals we send to others and the way we dance with others. So from my point of view, we might as well get to know them. And, and start to use them well. But then I do something called emotionally focused therapy. So, you know, I am going to feel that way. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you so much. Sue, we need to just take a quick break to talk about this week's sponsor. And I am excited to tell you about them. They've been sponsoring us for a few weeks now. Their name is Sweet Hop. And what they offer is, I think, really unique if you're looking for a fun date night opportunity. At venues and arenas around the country, games and concerts take place, and sadly, often the luxury suites sit empty or half full because they're simply not made as readily available and accessible to the public compared to regular general admission seating. So if you've ever wondered what it might be like to take in a concert or game from one of those luxury boxes, Sweet Hop is for you. They allow the owners of those luxury boxes to sell you tickets so that you can have that experience. Luxury suites and VIP box seats are available in groups of two to eight seats, perfect for a date night or groups of friends, and usually include access to luxury clubs, exclusive bathrooms, which can be really important at a big event like that, and VIP entrance. So these are great seats for a show as well, with having plenty of space for you and no sweaty drunk people landing on top of you, at least no sweaty drunk people that you don't already know. There are also fabulous food and beverage options that can turn a regular event or game into a luxury experience. On the Sweet Hop website, it's super easy to browse the list of events or games in your area or to simply pull up a venue and see everything that's available. So if you're looking for an extra special date night option that your partner definitely won't forget, check out Sweet Hop. You can visit www.sweethop.com slash date night to find an amphitheater or venue or show near you. That's S-U-I-T-E hop.com slash date night. And thank you so much, Sweet Hop, for sponsoring this episode of Relationship Alive. And now, Sue, let's get back to our conversation. I'm wondering, before we go, because I promised something quick, and it's so easy to talk to you, and we could talk, we could keep talking about that very topic probably we for could. an hour. Um, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to just, anyone listening, if they wanted to do one thing today that would infuse their relationship with some positive energy and if they're not in a relationship maybe just infuse their relationships with others in their life with some positive energy what's one thing that they might be able to do like they, they turn off this podcast and they can go and do it today oh my goodness <laughs> there's so you. many things I you know, could I do know. there's so many things you could do i mean what we see when couples have repaired their relationship or when they've gone through our education groups, is that they reach for each other. They reach for each other and they, they risk sharing. So, you know, that's what we do when relationships are working. So uh, that doesn't have to be a big thing. You know, I can remember I worked with somebody last week for a whole week. This young woman was um, helping me. And at some point during the evening, I looked across at her face and I saw – and she was starting to talk about something and I saw the the emotional music change and her face change and I suddenly really got in my body 
that this was something she this she was in pain she was suddenly in pain mm. you know she wasn't just chatting anymore she was in pain and you know um, usually I don't know what we do with that. We kind of don't want to embarrass the person, so we stay away. And I just had this incredible feeling. So I saw that she was vulnerable, and I reached. So I, I reached. So what did I do? I didn't want to embarrass her. So I just went around the table and sat beside her and put my hand on her arm and looked at her. And what I was saying to her with, you know, we do so much nonverbal. What I said to her with my eyes was, I see that you're in pain. Mm -hmm. And she just turned into my into my neck for a minute. You know, she didn't, you know, some other people at the table might not even have noticed. She just turned into me for a minute and, you know, um, sort of put her hand on my hand. It was like, I see you. I see you. I And I feel what you, I care that you are there. And so I reached for her and she, it's like her whole body told me, Thank you. You know, thank you for this. People love it when we see them. Yeah. You know, people, um, you know, we do this with our dogs. We do this with babies. We forget that adults want it too. You know, my dog will come and drop his toy at my feet and I'll say, oh, you want to play? You're such a good dog. And my dog will quiver in, you know, joy, right? And why can't we do that with people? Just see them, see them and respond to them. It's so powerful. And in our busy lives, we, we don't do that very, we don't listen. We don't, we don't honor. We don't say, it's like we say to people with our actions, I see you, you know, you, we're two human beings on this planet in this short little time we have here. I see you, you know, this is, I'm with you. You're not alone here. You matter. I mean, that's a very powerful message. I agree. Such a gift to give someone else your, your care, your attention, to actually see them fully. Thank you so much, Sue, for joining us for this quick dive into your so world and the Sue world of relationships. Four? This is, is this, Sue Four. Is, this is Sue Four. And do I, do I improve every time, Neil? I, is this, is, I think uh, we both improve. I think we both do. <laughs> okay. That was very insensitive of me. Yes, you do improve, Neil. We both improve um, every time. That's right. Thank okay. you so much for your willingness nice to join to us to today. You. And yeah, for you listening, neilsatin.com slash Sue4 to check out the transcript and download it. And Sue, I'm so looking forward to talking with you again sometime soon. Yes. Take care. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of Relationship Alive. If you like what you've heard and want to make it easier for other people to find out about us, please take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and to rate and review us on iTunes. If you have questions or comments or want to continue the conversation, you can always join our Relationship Alive community Facebook group. And for more information about today's episode, visit us online at neilsatin.com slash podcast. Or you can always text the word PASSION, P-A-S-S-I-O-N, to the number 33444 for more information. Finally, do you have a burning question that you're hoping we can have answered here on Relationship Alive, either for a future or past guest? Let me know and I'll see what I can do. Take care and see you next time.